All right, um, welcome back to the studio, uh, at least kind of. Uh, today I want to demonstrate for you a uh, technique of using paper stencils. In fact, I'll uh, demonstrate maybe a six layer color uh, paper stencil print technique uh, and talk about ink transparencies and uh, qualities and, uh, and maybe some other stuff like that. In order to do that, I need to have some inspiration and, and why I'm out here is because I have this, uh, my plum tree starting to blossom and so I'm all inspired by uh, that and other natural forms and so what I'm going to do is wander around and take a little walk down to my little pasture area and uh, find some inspiration and let me turn this around and I'll take you with me for a second. Hey. All right, so here we are, uh, back to it, and uh, these are some of those beautiful blossoms. I am so happy to see these come out right now. And um, let's take a short walk down here real quick and see what's gonna happen. Climb over this fence. Oh, there's one critter. What's up, Merlin? Let's see. Hi, Boo. Hey, old man dog. Let's see. All right, so there's a lot around here. Head down to this little grove area. Uh, looks like the goat lords are going to come and help, too. This is Captain Cosmo. Hey, buddy. That's Starbuck. Hey, buddy. And Oberon. Come on, you guys. Let's go and find some leaves. All right. I'll get back with you after I find a few things and get back up into the studio. All right. Well, welcome back to the studio. I got a bunch of uh, natural forms down there from... The, uh, the field and beyond, some seeds and some, uh, let's see, rose hips from last year, leaves, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, so I use those as inspiration, and I've made some um, stencils. This is out of uh, some Pronto Plate lithography paper, actually. So drew and cut that, that stencil in there. I made a variety of um, stencils on a variety of materials. This is on a piece of acetate. You can maybe kind of barely see that. And uh, this is on just a piece of regular old uh, recycled paper, recycling paper. And so um, I've cut those uh, leaf shapes out and I'm going to make uh, the prints from them, obviously. I also have the uh, positive shapes from all of those. So, which leaves me with the ability to have uh, six different layers, one positive, one negative of each form in this uh, multiple layer stencil based print. So that's the idea that I'm going to be going with. Um, with the, when you make your stencils, you can use the paper, of course, that though leaves you with a one time, one shot use, because it's obviously not going to be good anymore. The advantage to using a um, acetate uh, is that you can reuse that stencil again later on and I've never I just had this uh, pronto plate polyester plate laying around and I'm thinking I can do the same with those whatever you use for your stencils um, experiment with that I think freezer paper makes good stencils I thought I had some of that around but I didn't um, I have these stencils these old letter forms from around I don't remember where I got them years ago um, this so you want to use something paper thin. This thick of a stencil um, is going to leave a really thick layer of ink, especially around the edges when it's printed. And, well, you know, not that you don't want to use it. Every time there's a rule, it's good to break it. But that is going to be problematic. So when you're just messing around starting off, just uh, keep them thinner. I've also gone ahead and um, prepared my paper for printing. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through getting getting ready to print. So obviously creating the stencils is a first part. 
Um, here's the paper I'm going to be printing on. Um, this is uh, French paper, regular paper white French paper. I've got five sheets of that. I have five sheets of this um, stationary paper I got uh, from a, uh, a recycle-a-thon. Anyway, um, it's got some in paper, some leaf inclusions in it, which I thought would be uh, cool for this print. Been waiting to use that for some reason. Now I have a reason. Um, this is some mulberry paper, some Unryu. It's got the uh, the little white streaks in there. Um, and I also have these are some older um, cyanotypes here. Got a variety of stuff. Some older experiments and monotype screen prints that I will be printing on too, just to see what they all look like. Um, so, prepping the screen, I've cleaned thoroughly my screen in the bathtub here at home, and um, I've taped off the shape of my print. This is a 6 by 6 inch square, which matches my paper, of course. Um, I've attached it firmly to the uh, screen clamps. You want to be firm with that. You don't want it in the middle of your printing. You don't want that to wiggle if you're doing an addition to print where everything needs to line up, um, then that wiggle will uh, cause you to go crazy. So be sure that's firmly attached. I will be uh, using a flop this time. I'll show you how to use a flop when I print. And so the flop is a piece of seven mil acetate. This is a thicker acetate that has been taped down. I use a blue tape on both sides of this so that it doesn't move around. The flop is going to help me to register and I want that secure. I want that to stay so that um, it's going to lay down in the same space every time. And I'll demonstrate that uh, coming up. Um, since I don't have um, a, uh, a uh, hole punch to use a hole punch registration, Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to use this uh, sort of modified kento. So this is going to be where I lay my paper each time in there and line that up like that so that I can build my layers and get them to all line up in their addition. Not quite. You can be very accurate with it. It's not quite as reliable as the pinhole hole punch registrations, but um, here in my home studio, I don't have that equipment, so I'll use this instead. I've got, let's see, other things I'll need to print. My Mr. Spray bottle, some water in case I need to uh, clean up ink where it shouldn't have gotten. Of course, a clean squeegee, tape, and all of that. All right, ink. I have mixed my ink, so my idea is I've got six layers. I think I want to print six layers, so... Um, I have five colors. We'll see what needs to happen at the end of those layers. Anyway, my concept is to use two grays, a medium gray and a light gray. And then um, these are pro uh, CMYK uh, process, cyan, magenta, yellow, and I mix the grays out of the black. And so... Um, I have mixed a lot of tint base, a mixture of tint base, transparent base, and the extender base into these colors because I want them to uh, show the previous layers beneath them so they build up these primaries. We're going to create secondaries, and when they all mix together, then you get the intermediates, and these tints are going to add uh, grays uh, to those colors. So in theory, I should get a wide variety of, um, of color and value out of the mixture of all of these. And I'm going to leave that last color um, for, I don't know, we'll see. Um, I'll talk about that later. Um, when you're mixing color, um, let me talk about this for a second. So, um, when uh, doing a CMYK print, um, a halftone split. Now here, uh, let me swing you over. Sorry to make you dizzy. This is a uh, CMYK halftone uh, print um, experiment that I was doing. It's printed on rice paper. You can see from those 
uh, four colors, you get a, a wide variety of everything that you would want. So back over here, the CMYK printing is done uh, with a very specific mixture of the, the colors. So um, I've got that written down here. This is 50-50 ink to tint base. Uh, these are like 60-40 for the magenta, cyan, and black, something like that. Um, and I took those and I mixed them again with about 50% ink and um, have done a drawdown here with just pulling the ink down with my finger to see um, the saturation of the color. Um, the, you can see uh, with the yellow, for example, that's the first one, and I thought that was, I had put too much uh, transparent base and extender base in there, and so I added more yellow back to it and did that. So I've got, I did the same thing with these other ones. I modified them a little bit to get them to be where I felt comfortable with them. One last thing. Um, this is extender base. Extender base is different than transparent base a little bit. Transparent base is going to both extend your ink and make it much, much more transparent. Obviously, that's what it's for. The extender base is going to extend your ink and make it somewhat more transparent. It's going to get more transparent, but not quite as much as using the transparent base. And I always add about 10% glycerin to my ink to keep it from drying because here in the desert, as you know, things dry very, very quickly and it becomes a nightmare. Anyway, um, I will get back with you and begin to print this and demonstrate all of the techniques that you'll need to know to do that um, here in a few minutes. All right, bye-bye. Hi, everybody. Back at you again with just a little bit more of a hint uh, that I forgot to add a, a minute ago, and that is to, um, in preparation for printing, add um, some risers or stilts to this end of the screen. And what this is, is, uh, looks like, looks like this. Let me get this in a better light. There we go. And that is essentially, better light, okay, a piece of uh, old, in my case, foam board that I've wrapped in in blue tape, and then I have taped it to the corner of the screen, so that when it <clears throat> when it drops down, what I need is for there to be an equal amount of space all the way down here. And the reason that I need that is that when I go to print, I need some uh, offset between the screen mesh and the uh, printing paper. So when I pull the squeegee here, it bounces back up and comes off of the paper. And I get a cleaner print that way. So be sure to uh, add some of these stilts here um, so that you get that. Some people will put them down here on the corner of where the, the uh, screen itself is going to come down. Um, it's personal preference. Either way, the, the principle is the same. You need, again, you need this distance here. Um, lots of ways to do that. Uh, I use foam core, foam board. Uh, some people will use coins or stacks of illustration board or anything like that. <clears throat> all right, almost ready to print. I'll come back to you with all of that here in a minute.